I'll be honest, I have a love-hate relationship with GA4. And if I'm going to be really honest, it's mostly a hate relationship. It's just a lot more difficult to get information that our clients need out of the GA4 platform than it was Universal Analytics. I think that's pretty true across the board for the entire industry. Seems like everybody is struggling. But one thing that I do like about GA4 is the ability to customize the reports tab to whatever makes sense for your business. Now, maybe Universal Analytics had that feature and I wasn't aware of it, but if so, that's kind of the problem. It should be easy to find ways to make things easier and more useful. So today I wanna to talk about GA4 collections, how you can customize them and make sure that you're getting the data that you and your clients need out of the platform in a really easy, simple way. In an effort to make sure we have actual data to work with, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up these reports and these collections in a client GA4 account, which means that we're gonna to have to have some stuff blurred out, but hopefully I'll be able to find reports that use anonymized data or are something like this, where you just see organic search, direct paid search as traffic sources, and we hopefully won't have to blur out too much. First, I wanna start by talking about the high level organization of your GA4 profile and the different aspects of the reporting that we're gonna talk about today. So first, all of this is gonna be based in the reports tab within GA4. So it's gonna be this section here. And we're gonna be talking about how to customize basically this entire menu over here to the left. Right now, it is set up as a default view for all GA4 profiles. You'll pretty much always see this organization of snapshot, real time, a lifecycle group and then a user group with the following reports down below. Now the report snapshot and real time, you're not able to edit as far as I know, but we're gonna talk about basically the sections for lifecycle and user. So really quick, I just wanna go through the naming convention that we're gonna use for these as we get into the customization and I'll call them out as we're doing it, but I just wanted to give a quick overview while we're already here. So both lifecycle and user those lines, and you can see there's a little tiny gray line in between them. Each of these is a collection. And then everything down below it is going to comprise all of the different reports that build up to each collection. So in lifecycle, we have acquisition at the top. Acquisition is going to be a topic. And you can see when I click on it, all it does is open or close the menu. There's not actually a report associated with this. So this is just a name that it has been given by Google to denote that these are the acquisition reports. Then down below, each topic will have one overview report, which is aptly named as overview, and then it can have any number of detail reports down below. So the detail reports are gonna be user acquisition and traffic acquisition. The same is gonna be true for user attributes down here. User is the collection, user attributes is the topic. And then down below, we have an overview, with two detail reports, demographic details and audiences. And you can have more detail reports than this. For engagement, you can see that there are four different detail reports, but each topic will only have one overview report. And we'll get to that in just a minute, but I just wanted you to see kind of what the naming convention is for each of those. Now to start customizing the organization of these, we can go down to library down here at the bottom. And here you'll see the two different sections that effectively comprise what we just walked through. First is the collections editor. And then down below, we have the actual reports section. So for each of these different menu items over here on the left, you're gonna to need to create an overall collection. And then you can use the reports builder down at the bottom to fill out all of the different detail and overview reports that you wanna use. So in an effort to try and make this a clear progression from zero to one, we're gonna start by creating a new collection. I think that's the best way to get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and create new collection. And here you can see that we have a couple different options. We can either create a blank collection that we just start from scratch, or we can use one of the templates. Now you'll probably recognize user and lifecycle as those are already published. And we did see business objectives in there as well. But for the sake of keeping this really simple to start and help you see the building blocks of these collections, I'm gonna go ahead and start with a blank template. And then you'll see that this is what the builder looks like when you create a new collection. So the first thing we wanna do is give it a name. So come over here and I'm gonna name each of these different stages example and then what layer it is. So you'll be able to see that pretty clearly once we have everything published. So I have my example collection as the name. And then next we need to create a topic, which you'll remember is not actually a report. It's just the name of the group that you have here. 
So now we have our example collection, example topic, and now you can see that we can start adding in an overview and detail reports. All of those are gonna live over here. And it's pretty easy to just drag and drop those from one section to the other. So let's start with overview report because that one always shows up at the top. And there are quite a number of different overview reports that you can start with, whether it's acquisition, monetization, retention, whatever you want. For right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop in acquisition review. To do that, you just need to click the six little dots drag it over and drop it in there. And now the acquisition overview is gonna show up. But as I mentioned, you can only have one overview report per topic. So if I were to try and grab the engagement overview and drag it in here and add it as well, you'll see that it just replaces the acquisition overview. If you wanted to have a second overview report eligible somewhere, you would have to create an entire new topic to get started with that. Now for the detail reports. Again, there's quite a number to choose from, from audiences, conversions, events, user purchase journey, lots of different things in here. So since I have engagement, let's just go ahead and stick with a few of those different types of topics. So let's do pages and screens. Again, just grab the six dots, drag it over here. And although it doesn't show an area for you to drag another detail report, all you need to do is come and grab the second one that you want, drag it over here. You can kind of reorder as you're going. I haven't let go of the mouse yet and drop it there. And you can do that for pretty much any number of reports that you want. If you ever need to reorder which ones are in there, all you have to do is grab the six dots and move it. And if you decide you don't want something, all you have to do is click the little X and it'll remove the detail report that you have. Overall, this process is pretty simple. If you wanted to create another topic, you just need to click this right here. You can give it a new topic name and then you'll have the exact same builder that you had below. So you can add as many topics and detail reports with some supplemental overview reports into this collection as you see fit. Now, this is the only portion where I'm gonna start talking a little bit about the custom reports, because I think it's important to note that right now, we are only seeing the default reports that are eligible in this GA4 property. Whether it's a detail or overview reports, we're only seeing these different items because those are the ones that are currently built. So if I hop into another screen, I'm back in the reports library here, and now I'm gonna create a new report. You can see I can choose either an overview report or a detail report. And just for fun, let's go ahead and do a detail report. You can start from a template or blank. And again, I'm just trying to get something in here. So let's go ahead and do traffic acquisition. And again, this is not the video where I'm gonna talk about how to use the report builder. All I wanna do right now is change the name of this report and hit save. I'm gonna give it example detail report. So we keep the naming convention the same, click save. And then back in the custom collection builder, I had to refresh so this might not look identical to what I did before. You can see in the detail reports, if I scroll down, I now have example detail report is at the bottom. That's the one I just built. And then all I have to do again, drag, add it to my collection. I can do whatever I want. So the takeaway here is not only can you customize the collection and the topics that you want to show up in the left-hand navigation, but you can also completely customize the reports themselves from overview to detail reports to make sure that when somebody visits those reports, they have exactly what you need to have in them. And it's not just all of the default reports that GA4 provides. Let's say I'm happy with this example collection, even though it's not really showing anything. We'll go ahead and click save. And unlike other sections in GA4, all it did was show up a little message at the bottom, but now I need to click back. And now you can see that my example collection has also shown up here in the collections section. So that's how you create a collection from scratch. But whether you use one of the templates that GA4 provides, or if you wanna edit an existing collection, all you need to do is click edit collection. That same builder will pop up, but you'll see that all of the preset options are already in here. So you could adjust either the order of these reports, get rid of some of them, add in new reports, whatever you wanna do. But it's really easy to customize even existing collections, whether they are the ones that were there by default or one of the templates that GA4 has set up for you. Now, once you have finalized the collection that you wanna use, the last thing we need to do is publish it. As you can see right now, lifecycle and user are both showing up over here on the left and they're listed as published, but neither our example collection nor the business objectives collection are published. So once you are finished with that, all you need to do is come to these three dots here and then click publish. Now you'll see immediately up on the left, we have example collection, example topic, and then we have the reports and everything that I put down here over on the left-hand side. So it's very easy to add those. And if you decide that you don't want to use that or if they're not quite ready to be client facing just yet, all you have to do is click the three dots again, click unpublish. And then just like that, it goes away.
You'll also notice that there are some adjustments here. So with these three dots, you can either edit this collection, which does the same as this button here. You can rename it. You can delete it if you decide you don't want this collection anymore, or if it's not of any use. Or you could make a copy and make some adjustments. So one of the things that I found really useful for me is any of these standard collections, whether it's objectives, lifecycle, or user, if there are changes that I want to make to this collection, what I like to do is actually create a copy of it, edit that copy, and then publish the new one while retaining the existing lifecycle default reports that GA4 set up, just in case something happens and we need to revert back to the default interface. It's a lot easier to do that rather than delete it, build it back again through a template, anything like that. Personally, I'm a big fan of these different collection pieces. And as I mentioned earlier, maybe Universal Analytics had this type of customization, but I wasn't aware of it. And that's effectively part of the problem. GA4 makes it really easy to customize the left-hand navigation portion of your reports to make sure that no matter what you're trying to do, you can get the data really quickly and it's customized to what you want. Because again, not only can you customize the collection, you can customize the reports that make up the collection. Hopefully this has made it a little bit easier for you to navigate in GA4, or at least it will make it a little bit easier. But if you have any additional questions about collections in GA4 or pretty much anything else, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.